All right, let's do another sampling distribution problem. Here's section 6.4, number three, it would be like number eight in the book. <clears throat> I saw that it was uh, marked wrong and there were several that missed it last year too, so it must be worth trying. Assume a population is made up of one, two, and 12. Assume the sample size, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Assume the sample size n equals two are randomly selected with replacement from the population and remember, with replacement means that if I pull a 1, then I throw the 1 back in the group of 3. And <clears throat> imagine, I say pull, uh, and I didn't give you any context. So imagine that they're in a hat. The numbers 1, 2, and 3, I'm uh, sorry, 1, 2, and 12 are written on the exact same size pieces of paper. There's nothing different about the papers <clears throat> except for the numbers written. I pull one out, I throw it in, I pull possibly another one out again. So what we're doing is we're listing all the samples of size 2 from a population that only has three items. Listed below are the samples. <clears throat> okay, Complete parts A through D. Okay, Find the value of the population standard deviation sigma. Now it's interesting, uh, several of the questions did not start this way. They actually started by going through the distribution, finding the mean of the distribution, and so on. <clears throat> and then we looked at the population standard deviation later. But you can do it now, you can do it later. That's the thing about this. So the standard deviation sigma because we're talking about populations why we use that notation quick reminder about this go down the symbols our statistic symbols <clears throat> and we got things like a small uh, lowercase sigma showing up here for standard deviation of the population of all possible sample means x bar <clears throat> that will not be the notation on this one and we'll talk about why in a sec uh, those are the ones we use in the sample in the probability just I'm sorry in the central limit theorem uh, let's come down here here is s samples the sample standard deviation and here's Sigma the population standard deviation now before I leave this page <clears throat> notice that X bar is the mean of our sample and you notice that when you have the mean of sample ranges for example so you take a bunch of ranges from samples and you find the mean of that, that's um, R bar. Uh, you have the proportion obtained by pulling two samples. Um, similar, and we can talk about when we get to this Y. But, but we use this bar notation. And in the homework, down here when they ask us to find the mean of the sampling distribution of sample standard deviations, we're thinking of this as like a distribution of um, standard deviations. And we want the mean of it, so we call that sigma bar. It's just um, hopefully helping you see how to read the notation. But use the symbols table often and understand the notation, because it really does matter. OK, um, so find the, the standard deviation. Well, let's go here and try to remember if they told us. They don't, right? That's right. So they have the standard deviation for sample. It's the square root of the sum of all the squares of the deviations divided by n minus 1. For the population standard deviation, sigma, that is just going to be capital N. We've seen that on page 101 from chapter 3. <clears throat> to know the difference, uh, you should look it up. It's an important difference why 1 is n minus 1 and 1 is n. Okay, so uh, I will do this one with Excel, and I'll do it semi-annually, 1, 2, 12. Now I've already got I've already got these things calculating the variance, variance uh, and standard deviation. So the answer is going to be 4.96 blah blah blah. But you could have done it relatively quickly. And I'm just going to do this in stop motion steps. I don't have the labels, but here are all the differences. 1 minus the mean, 2 minus the mean, 12 minus the mean. So these are the deviations. So these are the x's. These are the x minus x bars, because this is the sample mean x bar. So what are we supposed to do? Then we need all our squares. OK, then we need that sum.
now we can calculate the population standard deviation by taking square root of that sum of the squares of the deviations divided by the total number of items which we have, three. And there's our 4.9666667. Now if I was doing this during a test, I would clearly not waste all my time and I would put in STDEV, start looking up the standard deviation. Notice that I have two. This one it says is the one that gives the standard deviation from the entire population. So I select that, take my set, crunch it. Um, I'm sorry, it's it's 4.967, not 66667. There's that. Let's see, you had 5.268, so I'm going to just do a quick check. Did you find the sample standard deviation? So imagine you would have done that calculation. No. Hmm. Okay, so next part. Find the standard deviation of each of the nine samples. I can do this in StatCrunch, I can do it in Excel. Since I'm already using Excel, I might as well stay there, but I really like StatCrunch, especially when I'm doing it from the homework or a quiz. I just click that, open the set already listed. We'll have a list of how many items we have, and then the actual items listed in two columns, like we have here. I can hit Stat. And this, th these are going to be sample standard deviations of these two, two size samples. So I'm going to go Summary Stats, rows, choose both of them, hold control as I do, and I really only need standard deviation, so I'll just choose that. I'm going to store this right back into the table, this looks prettier. Okay, and then I can <clears throat> list it out, the unique ones, in order, in ascending order. So, uniquely speaking, we have standard deviation of zero. Now that makes sense, because anytime you have the same data number, the same numbers in your data set, they deviate nothing from their mean because they are the mean. One plus one is two, divided by two is one. Um, similarly for two plus two is four, divided by two, because there's two items, is two. 12 plus 12 is 24, divided by two is 12. So they won't deviate, they are their mean. Okay, then we have, let me just list them all really fast, I don't have to read them. All right, and let me count them. Now there's nine items, nine possibilities altogether, so the probability of each is one ninth. But since we're looking at their standard deviations, the probability of a standard deviation of zero appearing, since it occurs one, two, three times, is three ninths, in other words, one third. So I could put in three ninths or one third. Similarly for the rest, and you gotta have a watchful eye and read them carefully. So here's the list. Uh, there are one, okay, it won't let me highlight, one, two, three. So three ninths, which is one third reduced. Then one, two, and you gotta read carefully. Those are the ones that start with 0 0.7. Similarly, one, two for those, and one, two. So this is a probability distribution right here learned about in chapter five. Back then those were discrete probability distributions and this will behave uh, similarly. I'll show you because um, we have one, two, three, four items and they have probabilities you know, given and there's nothing else. So let me show you the picture that this would look and it looks similar to pictures that we saw in chapter five um, because it's not going to um, cover a range of a continuous range of distance. Let me, let me show you. So I'm just graphing them all <clears throat> and right now it's kind of dull. It looks like just a bunch of points and that is because it is. So let me hide the points. These are going to be the endpoints of the lines that I used to describe the distribution in a graph. So, uh, and let me enlarge this space a little bit. We're not going to connect them because this is not continuous. So I'm just going to connect, I mean, I'm going to connect the lines, but we're not going to connect a curve between the uh, tips of the lines because it's not continuous. So 
I'm just going to go ahead. And put those segments in. Still not very uh, clear probably, but we see a little distribution here where the heights are one third and two nights, two nights, two nights. So if I wanted to talk about the probability of getting a, a standard deviation of 7.071 blah 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 blah, it's this one and the probability to come over here would be two nights. It's about right there. So not unlike the discrete probability distributions that we did in chapter five when we were dealing with Poisson, which we didn't do those, or binomial. You remember those? Okay. Well, you're going to use those, by the way, again in chapter section 6.6. Six, six, so hopefully you do remember those. All right, that's that distribution. Now, if we wanted the mean of it, we follow the same procedure that we did Back in chapter 5, we multiply each random variable by its corresponding probability and add it up, and that gives you the expected value. So I'll do that. First, their products, and then the sum of the products. And that right there is the mean the mean from the probability distribution. It's 3.456 blah. Oh, incidentally, you can do it in here also. It's probably not worth it, but retype these in as um, decimal values equivalent to what we had, three ninths, two ninths, two ninths, two ninths. <clears throat> and then create an expression from the data. and build it by taking the items where the variables are, multiplying them by their corresponding probabilities. Okay, uh, you can call that x times p of x. Okay, and then we just want the sum of all those, so we should be able to just double check here. Now we should be able to go under data, another computation, get the expression where we sum just using the function sum. I think I could have just typed it in also. And then I could have typed this with quotes. I'm going to sum up those products and I'll just go ahead and call this mean actually that'll be more descriptive I'll say mean of probability distribution and you'll see <clears throat> they put it over here and it's 3.4 blah 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 so I don't know you know a lot of this it's just a simple calculator probably is as good as anything else that wasn't the answer, by the way. Um, probably as good as anything else. If you want to use Excel, there's Excel. I'm just doing this to demonstrate how here's our probability distribution. Here is our uh, row, our column of the rows multiplied together, and here's the um, sum of that. Now, I called this the mean, but remember, this is the mean. This is um, sigma if it didn't have any other context. When we answer in the problem here, they don't say sigma, they say, I'm sorry, they don't say mu. Apologize, mu. Uh, they don't say mu, they say sigma bar. That's another way of saying the mean of this distribution, which was a distribution of, of sample standard deviations from size two samplings. So important to understand this notation. In fact, if I was to draw it out, I'd draw it out like this. Here's that distribution that we had earlier, but I'm going to label. I'm going to label that these themselves are not x values. They are a bunch of sigmas, and I'm going to label this sigma n equals 2. You cannot see that. 
kind of screw it over. Okay, um, so these are a bunch of sigmas that that we got. You know, when the samples were the same, one, one, two, two, twelve, twelve. There was no deviation, so that was a sigma that we got there, and that were that were those specific samples, and they're all each sample was size two. Okay, and then we got another sigma. So I call that sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. Don't mind the poor handwriting. Sigma four. And I know this is not continuous, so I said, remember, you're not going to draw a curve for this, but if you were to imagine, you know, if it had a curve, if it were continuous and it wasn't just four sticks, then you could imagine that this curve would have a whole bunch of sigmas inside here. Sigma, 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 sigma. Okay, and then the mean of this, which turned out to be 3.5 something, 3.4. Five seven, kind of makes sense, right? Turns out to be right about here. That would have been uh, not x bar because these were not x's, right? But these were sigmas, correct? So you would call it sigma bar. See how we play with the notation? Well, we we layer the notation. And you don't need um, to overlay this normal distribution or this continuous distribution to, to believe what I just said. You can simply just list these right here as sigmas, because that's what they are. And then their mean would fall right here, so it's the sigma bar. If these were x's, it would be x bar, x is meaning from the sample. You're really going to need this notation when we get to chapter 8. All right, what did we find out? We found out that the standard deviation from the actual population that we originally calculated was 4.967. But then when we found the sampling distribution of sample standard deviations when samples are taken at size 2, and we took all possible samples, which there were 9, we get this and find the mean of that probability distribution, and we get this mean. They, If, if it's an unbiased estimator, they would target, they would equal each other, they would match, right? They don't notice that. So this just uh, emphasizes and teaches us that the sample standard deviation does not target the population standard deviation. Therefore, sample standard deviations are biased estimators. And I know I've shown this on other uh, videos, but here I go again. From a table that was removed in the newer editions, this is the 10th edition. They had worked out an example of population 1, 2, 5, similar to ours, 1, 2, 12, or ours. It worked out all the um, lists. They have the probabilities listed here. They just didn't condense each separate probability distribution, but you essentially have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 probability distributions. I'm sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's, those are just the samples listed. Six probability distributions where you, you can, each one has a 1 ninth probability, but then since there's repeats, you can make a condensed distribution. And then they find the mean from each of those probability distributions and then they have the population parameter if you would have actually gone to the original population data and calculated out the parameters and you'll see which ones target I'm sorry which ones target and which ones do not so we're just emphasizing again which ones are biased and which ones are unbiased standard deviation is certainly biased and we saw that even though it's biased, central limit theorem shows us that if we have a sampling distribution of sample means and we find the mean of that, it'll match the mean and the standard deviation will be off by a um, consistent irregular square root of n. If n is greater than 30, the original pop population doesn't have to be normally distributed either. All right, here's another long video, basically 20 minutes again. and. Let me just go ahead and put another point there.